What's up everybody? Welcome to the next video for EDD. This one will be on virtual solutions. Let's jump right into that introduction. Did you all know that the earliest known technical drawing in existence is a plan view of a fortress? It was drawn by a Chaldean engineer by the name of Gudea. This drawing was engraved on a stone tablet. It's actually kind of amazing how similar this type of drawing on a stone tablet is to modern plan views that we have today. The detail work was amazing. I hyperlinked both of those terms in case you wanted to do some more research. Here's Chaldean. This kind of breaks down for you where they're from. Mesopotamia, uh, much, much, much earlier than anyone would probably imagine. Gudea is also hyperlinked. He was a ruler of the state of Lagash in southern Mesopotamia, 2144 to 2124 BCE. A ruler by marriage and an architect. Pretty baller life. A bit later on, in 30 BCE, an architect by the name of Vitruvius wrote an architectural treatise that stated, An architect must be skilled with the pencil and have knowledge of drawing so that he, or she, can readily make the drawings required to show the appearance of the work he, or she, proposes to construct. This was written in like 30 BCE, and I'm sure in Latin, so probably very similar to this, and probably also just relying on the fact that only men at this time were spoken about in written word. Uh, but still, the point here is that we have to, as designers, know how to draw. Nowadays, we also have to know how to use software like Inventor or Fusion, SolidWorks, or maybe Onshape. Any of these types of CAD software, you're going to need to know how to use them. And if you are interested in things like architecture, you're going to need to know how to use things like AutoCAD and Revit. Any of those things might come in handy. But your ability as a designer is very similar to the ability of people from this time when what they had to write on was a stone tablet or a scroll of parchment. Main goal of this assignment is that whatever you create here has to be something that we understand and could be handed off to somebody to create your object. You have to have enough types of drawings, enough types of assemblies, enough types of technical drawings and dimensions and instructions that without verbal cues, the object could be put together, could be manufactured and put together, could be manufactured tested, and put together. Resources. Oh look, it's our trusty friend, the engineering notebook, and accompanying the engineering notebook, some device with internet access, preferably a computer, and of course, you know, whatever 3D modeling software you're going to be using, or whatever alternative method you're going to be using. This link is a lie. It does go to the virtual solutions rubric, but through ways of preparing to build documents, which hopefully at this point you or your teammates have seen. You can find it uh, right here. If you do look at it, you'll find it has some good information in it. It's there. It's useful. But of course, at the bottom of the assignment, you'll also find the rubric. There is a note here. And if you are unlucky enough to have to pay attention to this note, it means that we're still virtual. And if that's the case, great. If not, skip ahead a few seconds where I talk about the rest of this stuff. But for those of you that it is virtual, I highly recommend that you consider what are your capabilities. Do you have access to a piece of hardware computer that can download something like Inventor? Or maybe you already have it. Or where you can put Fusion 360 on your computer. Perhaps Onshape is the way you should go. If you're going to get something like Inventor, you have to have the capabilities to download it, to install it. It's something you're familiar with, most likely. Uh, if it's Fusion, great. It's a little less impactful on a computer, but you're still going to have to download it, and you're going to have to go through Autodesk's education community to get it. If that's the case, then you need to be aware that there are some hoops you'll need to jump through, and that you have to have a computer that can actually run it. If you're going to go with something that's web-based, like Onshape, this is something that PLTW is moving towards for all of the online stuff. Okay, so you're virtual. You have to use Onshape. It's not the best, but it is very usable. It looks very similar 
to Inventor. It looks very similar to Fusion. It functions in a very similar way. You move around the objects in a very similar way and you can make some fairly complex objects like you see uh, with this valve that we've created here. And this is something that IED students have to create. So fairly confident that EDD students could pick this up pretty easily. I can also point you in the direction of some resources for this as well. Most of you though will probably be most familiar with Inventor. Great. If you can get it, use it. And then of course there's Fusion. This is what I made my entire project on for the summer because we just weren't sure where we were going to be with the types of computers we could provide for students. So I got very familiar with Fusion. Both are very similar to each other and both of these are very similar to Onshape. You have to pick what you're going to go forward with. If you choose not to use some type of three-dimensional modeling software, then you're choosing the final alternative. And that's this second to last paragraph down here where you're going to draw everything by hand. And this is totally acceptable. This is how we used to do things way back in the day when I was your age. But it is going to be a little more time consuming in some aspects. Regardless of what you choose out of all of these options, we're learning and teaching remotely, whatever year this may be that you're having to watch this portion of the video, and we'll approach this as a team needs basis. The goal is to embrace what works for you. So hopefully you don't worry too much about it and you know that we'll get through it together no matter what the end result might be. All right, so hopefully you skipped to this part of the video if you didn't need to get into the alternate options for making your drawings and all of your CAD work. Let's talk about procedure. So this project, this assignment, is all about your team creating the technical drawings that are necessary to explain your team's design solution. In other words, you have to generate technical drawings using some type of 3D modeling software or the alternate software methods. You have multiple steps. You should follow each of them, but know that no two teams will have the same needs as far as the level of detail that they need to have or even the number of drawings that you have to create to include how many different parts you have to create. It's going to vary widely. I guess we could call these steps. Let's, let's call them steps. Step one, using the final design that your team agreed upon, create the necessary part files that make up your design solution. Then look at the rest of these bullets as it lays out for you what's expected. Look, if a part needs to be identified and is used in the construction of your object, you need to represent it to the best of your ability. This may require research and help from some of those experts and mentors, depending on your team's skill level. I can't create parts for you guide you, push you in a direction, but you're going to have to model them to the best of your abilities. You also really need to get into the materials. You need to understand what the mass properties are in some cases. So using this software can really help you determine what the mass properties are by telling it what type of material you're selecting. Hopefully the material you need will be provided in this software. If not, you're going to have to do a little bit of digging. Be organized, organized, organized. Make sure you save each of these files with easily recognizable file names. This will make your assembly drawings easier to organize. It'll make your drawing sheets easier. It'll make your title blocks easier. It'll make all of your parts lists easier. It will make your life so much nicer if you stay organized with these files and the file names. Don't, don't call it random part number five or, oh crap, I forgot to call this something, here's a name. I've seen it. It's not useful. It's not helpful. You forget what they are. Or you just start saying it's part number 10, version 7. What? That doesn't help. Give it a name that's useful. Stick with the naming scheme. Develop what it is and then stick with it. Your whole team is not going to be working on this. It's going to be a couple of you. Now maybe your whole team decides that they need access to it. And that's where these file names come in very useful if they're well organized and well named. Number two is all about making the drawing sheets that you need to make for each of the parts. So if you're going to make a part and then put it into an assembly, you also need to have a drawing sheet for it. We need to know how big this part is, at least with nominal sizes. And if it's a screw, you don't need to provide a whole bunch of details on it, but you need to provide enough that someone knows what type of screw they need to go buy or provide, or if necessary, 
to manufacture it. In that case, you might need to have a little more detail than you would if it's, say, a number eight coarse threaded two and a half inch screw, which I could go down to Lowe's or Home Depot and just purchase. So the kinds of annotations that you provide will go beyond anything you've ever done in another class. You need to dig a little deeper. You need to talk to those mentors, talk to those experts, look at some example ones, and start providing for us details that will help with manufacturing. You're not trying to provide something that will be just for a presentation. You're trying to provide for the manufacturer. Number three is all about you making assembly drawings. In other words, this is all about you making assembly files. This is about you taking the parts and putting them together. I don't really provide you with a lot of detail here. It's simply start an assembly file of some type or use the software that you're using in a way that can show how things are assembled depending on the type of software you choose to use or how you choose to go about this with some alternative methods, it's going to vary. But you need to show that your parts assemble together in a particular way. Exploded views would be great if you can provide that at minimum. But to do that with some of this software, you have to show how they're assembled first. Number four is about you taking an assembly file and putting that into a drawing sheet and providing us with an isometric, perhaps annotated if possible, but definitely providing us with multiple views of it so that we can see it from all sides when it's fully put together. Consider the fact that you may have multiple assemblies. You may have an assembly that shows this component all assembled together with its parts, and then it's a sub-assembly. And you have this component over here that's all assembled with its parts, and it becomes a sub-assembly. We need to see both of those as assemblies and then we need to see how those sub-assemblies come together in the main assembly as well. Number five may seem simple, but here's the deal. You're really looking to make sure that all of your files work. They're all saved. Maybe you even need to make sure you have backups of them. None of them are corrupted. All of them open. All of them function. All of them make sense when we look at the details of them. You don't have unconsumed sketches. You don't have sketches left turned on if unnecessary. You don't have file trees or in your browser on the left side of a lot of this software, a bunch of nonsense. In fact, it would even be very helpful if when you go into those files, you've named what this extrusion is. You've provided parametric modeling when possible. We're really looking for you to have taken what you've learned in classes like IED and extrapolate upon that in a great amount. So number five, which says double check all files. That's what I mean. That's a lot to do with just a few words. And save your files often. Notice I've capitalized those words. Save your files and do it often. Don't get caught with a file that is lost after you've been working on it for three hours because all of a sudden the power shuts down or your internet craps out and you lose all the work. Save often, especially if you're using Inventor. And then make sure you have backups of these things. Fusion, Onshape, if you're using those, they tend to save pretty frequently for you, and pretty much when you make a change, it's there. So just keep track of it and make sure you understand the version history stuff. It's encouraged that you do have those backup files. With Inventor, that's a little easier to do. With Fusion, just make sure that other people have access to them. You should be good to go. Keep them organized. Keep in mind that you need to document any refinements or changes that you make to any of the files or any of the solutions, any of the drawings in your ENB. Document, document, document. Make sure that you have a record of the things that you've made changes to. And here we are on number six. Here's the deal. You have to have worked out a way to present your drawing sheets to me. You need to make sure that your teammate can help us evaluate them and you need to be ready as a team to show me what you've created. Everybody needs to know about it. You all need to be up to speed on the drawings. But these documents are what I want to make sure look good for your CDR. So when it comes to the due date, be ready to have worked out with me however it is you want to provide these files to me. Even if it's just a matter of we're going to submit this and then show you during our check-in time, or we're going to submit a link to the Google Drive where we have backups of these, or Here's a link to all of the files that we have on Onshape, or I've already shared all these files with you on Onshape, so here's a link to Onshape. Whatever it is, let's work it out together 
and then make the decision as we go forward, are there changes that need to be made? By the due date, I should see that you have the bulk of this work done, if not all of it. And then you should be working on how do you get this information into the work that you need to provide for your CDR for this part. This is similar to an all or nothing assignment. It's not exactly an all or nothing though. You're going to provide for me the work that you have completed based on how good that is and how much of it you can provide for me will determine what kind of score I give you. This is out of 125 points and I am going to try and use this rubric to the best of my ability to assess it, but it's really going to boil down to what can you provide. I'd like to work through this rubric with you and your team as we go forward. It might be something we can do the very next day. It might be something I can start the day you turn it in. I might could start this early if you have it finished early, but it will take a little bit of time to get through and to be sure that I truly understand everything that you have. I'm going to try and be as, as caring as possible when looking at this and providing you with as good of a score as I can. But if you want that distinguished category for these things, it needs to be perfect. As perfect as possible, at least. Well, that's it. Here we are at the end of Virtual Solutions. We're getting close. We're almost there. You literally are creating the digital version of your solution with Virtual Solutions. Hopefully, you, uh, you'll nail this. I have faith in you. But, as always... Come see me, talk to me, ask me if you have questions, talk to those mentors, talk to those experts, do some research. It's a lot on a person or two to take care of. So really think about as a team, who's best in doing this, or is it something that you're all going to work on? I don't have that in the directions for you because I want you as a team to make the call here. Let me know if you have any questions, contact me if you have concerns, and as always, have a great day.